for millions of years. Mankind lived just like the animals. Then something happened which unleashed the power of our imagination. We weren't the talk. We got is it Stage Man? Yeah, Stage Man here. How you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. I've been watching your videos. I find you guys interesting, and uh, I wanted to call in, uh, make comments uh, on a couple of topics that you guys had talked about. Um, it appears that some of some of the the um, conversation isn't taking into consideration certain topics such as physics or biology. Um, I heard that you have a, a physicist there. Yeah, he's sitting right here. Fantastic. Um, uh, I don't know what your experience is as, as a physicist, or if you are, in fact, uh, a graduate of uh, your doctor. Uh, discipline, um, and if you're working in the field. But aside from that, um, God can be proven conclusively via physics and biology. Okay. That being that... Define God and uh, define uh, God and make what? your case. Excuse me. Define God and then make your case. Prove, prove that God exists with physics and biology. Oh, I am. Uh, well, you got to define God first. No, I don't have to define God. How, how are you going to say that physics and biology prove something that you haven't defined? Well, because if you listen to the evidence, you'll see that there has to be a God. No, and the evidence no, is, no. is that to you're, have, you're assuming some definition. Life. You're assuming some definition of God in order to make that statement at all. No, uh, well, listen yes, to the you have and then to you make your own, own own conclusion. No, no, stop. You you ha if you say that physics proves that there has to be a God, you have some working definition of God yes. in order to make that claim at all. And I want to know what it is. God is the being that is outside of time and space that created time and space. You as a physicist know that time is quantitative. It has already been conclusively proven that time is quantitative in physics. Uh, so if time is quantitative, it has a beginning, it has an end. That being the case, God is outside of time and space. He inhabits eternity, something that man cannot comprehend. If but we can't evidence, comprehend it, how evidence, can you make the assertion? The biological evidence... If we can't comprehend it, how can you make the assertion? Well, the biological evidence is is that to have life, you have to have a, a nucleotides and amino acids to make a protein. The direct enemy, or what destroys amino acids and nucleotides, is oxygen. Now, some people say that we formed in the ocean. We evolved out of the ocean. Well, that couldn't be because nucleotides and amino acids have to have got to synergize in the same amount exactly at the same time. Their enemy, oxygen. The ocean is water. What's water made up of? Uh, by, I'll say hydrogen and oxygen. Do I win? Oh, you win. Now, some people have even argued to me about... Uh, uh, however, however, synthesis. however, however, water isn't oxygen. There are lots of things I that contain the molecules. You've got to have the molecules of oxygen. So is every, a molecule. Mo every molecule that includes oxygen is the enemy of nucleotide. If right? oxygen is present, now if oxygen is present on its own. Now, granted, I'm not a scientist or a biologist, and I don't know whether any of this is accurate, and I don't know if my objections are valid or not. But you're absolutely right. If oxygen is present. In any amino form? acids and nucleotides cannot synergize okay. in the quantitative amount okay. to synergize proteins. How does this prove that a god exists? Because, well, let's look at it. Let's look at it logically. I, I am. If, if, if we couldn't have evolved in the ocean because of oxygen, okay, and that means oxygen couldn't have existed for amino acids and nucleotides to, ex to, to, to synergize. Okay, so, so... So, if oxygen didn't exist, life couldn't exist. No. No. You're completely and totally and utterly ignorantly wrong. How could oxygen you're talking, not you're talking, exist? Oh, shut up. You're talking about abiogenesis, <laughs> which is a theoretical field, which we don't necessarily know how life, in fact, did form. But we do know that life can, in fact, form. 
The, the Miller-Urey experiments demonstrated that under some atmospheric conditions, which do not match Earth, it doesn't matter that it doesn't, doesn't match Earth, that it was wrong, under some atmospheric conditions, life can spontaneously be created from non-life through purely natural means. That has been demonstrated. It doesn't matter that we don't know exactly how it did happen on Earth. The fact that it's possible is all we need to know. Yeah. The, uh, the other thing there? is... Oh. Well, the other point it's I'd not. like to make is that uh, the idea that, that amino acids couldn't form on the Earth is, is completely wrong because at the time the amino acids are, are uh, supposed to have formed, right. something like, what, uh, three and a half billion years ago, Something like that. By the way, if we can, put up a link to Talk Origins, where these questions are actually addressed by people who know what the hell they're talking about. Yes, because this I one's actually addressed. Didn't. Okay, actually, oxygen didn't exist on the Earth at that time in the same concentration that it does now, because plants hadn't evolved yet. Yeah. So that's what gave us the oxygen. Of course, plants evolved first, and then animal life came later. But the big point is that, um, I should say and I'll just go ahead bacteria. and pretend like he stayed on the line to defend himself. Um, whatever argument he ended up making um, is one big argument from ignorance. Hmm, life couldn't have possibly formed this way, therefore God did it. No, the only thing you've demonstrated, even if you were correct and you're not, even if you were correct, the only thing you demonstrated was that life couldn't form in that specific way that you've been that you've eliminated. You haven't possibly eliminated. You haven't eliminated all possibilities. You've just said, "I can't think of any other way it could have been done." Therefore, God did it. I can't think of any way this could have happened. Therefore, some being existing outside of space and time must have done it by magic. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. If you want to talk about possibilities and which which things are possible and which ones are not, um, that's fine. Uh, it, it, I'd like us to move more towards probabilities, but saying that physics and biology conclusively prove that a transcendent, out-of-time, intelligent being exists is absurd and demonstrates some of the most pitiful logical reasoning that I've ever heard. If it were true, you wouldn't be calling in to a public access television program to tell me that physics proves God. Uh, no, it doesn't. If that was the case, everybody would know about it. It'd be, uh, there would be scientific journals peer-reviewed demonstrating that physics proves God. The one, the one specific God that you defined after being forced to. It's not the case. I realize you want it to be the case. I realize you can't think of anything better. I realize that you've, you've, you spun yourself around with this potential paradox, and the only solution you can come up with is magic man, but that don't make it so. Sorry. The God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all fiction. Jealous and proud of it. A petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak. A vindictive, bloodthirsty ethnic cleanser. A misogynistic, homophobic, racist, infanticidal, genocidal, filicidal, pestilential, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully.